we're going to go over the exam in this video and don't be hard on yourself the exam is a learning experience and if you have the reaction like oh i should have gotten that i mean i've had the same feeling when i've taken exams when i've seen the solution oh i should have gotten that that wasn't as hard as i thought so that's okay that's all right uh, as i say uh, taking an exam is a learning experience and going over the exam is a learning experience and the advantage of the internet here i can make a, a nice video review for you and uh, work out the exam so that's what we're going to do next and let's do it okay time to go over the exam and let's look at this. The first one here, the multiple choice. We're looking at the uh, path that's going to take the least time to go from the top here down to the bottom. Now, when we did this in class, we looked at a case where somebody was in the water drowning. And here we were fast, because we were fast, and here we moved slow. And we found that you would you know, bend toward the normal like this, and that we have a Snell's Law in operation. Snell's Law. So that means here, if you're going from concrete to mud, from fast to slow, you're gonna to bend toward the normal. That's possible, that's possible. This looks weird. If you're gonna go with a zero degree angle in the transmission, then you're gonna to have to be coming straight down. So this is this violates this violates Snell's law. So it violates this idea of print, the principle of least time. Uh, this here is bending the wrong way, bending up. That's no good. Uh, this one has another straight down case, which violates Snell's law. So if you look at these, you go from fast to slow toward the normal. That's good. But now when you go from slow to to faster, you need to bend away from the normal. Uh, this one is no good. So it has to be A. And then here you check the last one, you bend away again. So we have A for the first one. For this case here, since this, this is normal incidence, the ray would go straight in like that. And if you do your normal again, like this perpendicular to the uh, surface, uh, you're gonna bend away from the normal. So you're gonna be somewhat uh, downward. Uh, you might remember, you know, the cut, the cut like this converging cut. So even if you had cut that in half, you would still have a converging, you know, cut like a converging lens. Well, the so far one here, what I would do is I would, uh, I would look at myself here in the water. I'm in the water. Here's the bathtub. Okay, here's the bathtub here. I'm in the water and there's a little, what, soap dish and soap there. So light you know, coming from that uh, soap, when you hit the water, you're gonna bend toward the normal. Uh, since you're going from fast to slow, same principle, then you're gonna perceive this to be a little bit higher up. Now, this was suggested that you do a little sketch here to, to understand what was going on. So this, you would see, actually you would see this. It, what you, you'd see is you would see something like this. You really wouldn't see that if you're under the water because the ray from the ray from that soap is going to be um, letting you believe it's that's up there so it would look more more like that so what's the answer shift upward next here you pull out the pocket mirror this is where remember we had like in class like we had somebody here you know looking at and the image would be you know behind the mirror but then if the eye were to were to intercept, let's see, look, like, like if you were to like, look, you'd have these two triangles. You'd have this big triangle here, and then you would have, you know, the, the triangle half at the halfway mark, which means this piece here is one half of the real size. Well, that means you're gonna be able to see twice the linear dimension of that mirror. So if the mirror is four by four, you're gonna be able to see eight by eight. I uh, hear, uh, I'm gonna put the nose on here so I can have a nose. Now, if the nose is there, if, if you were looking straight this way, the nose would be here. You turn a little bit like that. You see, uh, you're gonna have this image. 
the, with the nose is going to be there, and this one here, uh, it's going to be there, and this one here would be there. Okay, that kind of helps me get a bearing. See, so this ray is coming down there is going to hit here, you know, bounce over and you know come over to this eye as if coming from there. So your your right ear here, that this this is this is if that's your right ear. This is the right ear of the image. Now we know that left and right in you know, a reversal. So this is like the left uh, ear of this image, and this would be you know the left ear of, if you were this image here. So. The thing is, I'm seeing myself how others see me. So if, if I pick up my right hand, this right hand will come up. It, it'll be matched. So whatever it says here, it says you touch your right cheek with your right hand. So the image is right hand touches the right cheek. Yeah, that's the one it has to be. It's like, it's like you're seeing yourself as others see you. If your right hand touch your right cheek, then the image's right hand touch the right cheek. This one here, you know, it's hard to tell maybe if this is convex or con concave uh, for, you know, uh, my image is, image would be smaller and for con, uh, I guess they got farther away, we get smaller and for concave, but you know, it doesn't really matter because it's a virtual image and they're behind the mirror. So I, I would just look at it that way. See so if you had, you know, if you had a, a virtual image with a concave, you would, uh, let's see if you uh, go ahead and line that I would see like this, you would, you would be back here. This is your makeup mirror. And then if you have the convex here, then you find that it's a little baby image in here. So it doesn't really matter uh, the size, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we take an exam, times of the essence, so uh, it's just behind, behind the mirror. Which is true if you have an upright object and you have a vertical mirror, uh, like here, or you have, say, like there. Well, real images are, are well, ima real images are never. If you have just one thing, all the real images are upside down. All right, so uh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get that one. That's right. All virtual images are behind the mirror. Uh, yes, all virtual images are behind the mirror. That's the one I'm going to be looking for as being correct. The virtual images are, no, virtual images are not upside down. When you have just one object and one mirror, it's going to be like here. Here are the two cases. They're, they're upright. The two, upright smaller, upright larger. All real images are smaller. No, it's more. So it's the one that here I suspect that B all virtual images are behind the mirror. For the shortest positive focal length, you want the strongest lens. That's going to be uh, the first one. There's your focal point there, say. Because this is a neutral surface, that'll weaken things. It'll be farther, farther, farther out. And here, the rays won't even bend at all. So you would say this is like at infinity. And here, you're gonna get a diverging situation. And here, since it's doubly diverging, you're gonna get, you know, be closer, you know, there, be farther away there. So you want the shortest positive focal length, you want A. Uh, for this one, the wooden rail, okay, now that one there, that wooden rail is, is upside down smaller. So I know, I know when you have an upside down smaller case, that we're looking at this situation where you are, you know, fairly far away from the lens. So see, there's going to be upside down and smaller. So we're going to be over here. So it's upside down and smaller. It's going to be this case here. And it says that the wooden rail is two meters from the lens. Okay, so that's giving you that this is two meters. That's what it says. The fence, uh, the railing is two meters from the lens. So that means the focal length, you know, twice the focal length, you have to be beyond twice the focal length, otherwise you would not get the situation. So say if twice the focal length is there, uh, your focal length has to be less than one meter. All right. So that means here, 
between the observer and lens and less than two meter from the, uh, from the lens, uh, that looks like it's possible. Between the observer and the lens, greater than two meters, no, 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 that's definitely wrong. Between the lens and wooden rail, over on this side, oh, definitely wrong. Beyond the wooden rails, I mean, way over here, no way. All right, it's gonna be this one here, this first one. Between the observer and the lens, but less than two meters because it has to, the image is gonna be less than two F. For this one here, we have the F number problem. These F numbers here look like they are in order. Remember, one, 1.4, skip, jump, 2.8, skip, jump, four, skip, jump, six, skip, jump, skip, jump, skip, jump, skip, jump. So these look like they're in order, four, and then five, six. So this, this question gets thrown out if, if you had this version, because there was two versions of this exam, and it was supposed to have, so everyone gets it. If you got, if you got the one that has 32 here, everyone gets it. All right, so let me show you what the original intent of this question was, all right? These were the choices. So if you take the picture at F11 at a certain time frame, and then you go at half the time, you have to have twice as much area to take the picture. So the correct answer is not even there. So, depends on which version of the exam you got. I had two versions. Uh, so, if you have this, in fact, let's just say everyone gets it. it. It's just fair. Everyone gets this one. All right, so that one is going to be scratched because of the typo. And now we're ready to do our first essay kind of question. So, here we have... We have here the lady, say so paddling. Okay, so here, this is like the homework problem we had. So we're gonna use uh, the distance is the velocity times time twice. And we're interested in the time. So we want the time is the distance divided by the velocity. Now this distance here, if this is one, and, well actually we're starting from the very end. So we're starting from the very end. So we have this triangle like we did in the homework problem. And that's going to be uh, this hypotenuse, the square root of x squared plus 1, just like the homework problem, because you start starting up there. Okay, then here you're going to go 1 minus x is your distance, and you're going to go with it's 2. So we're just taking this formula, d. This one is, is divided by the speed is 1. And then this D is one minus X and the speed is two. All right, so that means the time is the square root, see X squared plus one, and then you have plus a one half, say minus a half, and you wanna minimize the time. So you take the derivative with respect to X, you get here for the first one, one half, this pops down here, and you're gonna get two X using the chain rule. And then over here, you get plus zero, and then minus a half. And that has to equal zero. So that means here that x over the square root of x squared plus one, because these two cancel, that has to equal the one half. All right, so if we square both sides, x squared has to be x squared plus one equals one fourth. And that means 4x squared equals x squared plus 1. 4x squared is x squared plus 1. 3x squared is 1. And uh, x squared is 1 third. And x is a square root of 3. Uh, 1 over square root of 3. Uh, 1 over the square root of 3. So you have x is 1 over the square root of 3. So there you go. And then if you use the calculator on this one, you would get 0.5774. Now when you're doing your, your, your exam like this, you shouldn't be doing what I'm doing here. Use a piece of paper and, and write it so it's easier for me to, for me to see. So X here is 0.58. So there we go. 
Okay, so that one's done. And now we come to the balloon uh, problem, the boy with the balloon, and we want to estimate the uh, radius of curvature, the focal length of that balloon. So the first thing to do is like we have a whole problem like this where we had like a, a convex mirror on the road, on the road, yeah, and we had an image of me. So we have to estimate the size here that it had. I, I just looked at that and figured it was like two or three times, is two or three times bigger so I went with I went with the magnification, and let's do this one like on a piece of paper so that like you know so we don't try to squeeze it in. So here I'm going with the magnification of uh, a plus because it's it's not inverted uh, two point five. All right, so I'm going with his head is two point five, the size of the image. So the uh, the magnification image is one over two point five. You know it's like smaller. So if we do that, this is also equal to the minus the image distance over the object distance. Now the object distance, you know, I just looked at my arm, you know, my arm I figured is like half a meter, like 50 centimeters. So I'm figuring the kids is like, is like 30. So, and here's where I'm gonna accept lots of answers. And there's some sensitivity to your choices. You might get a little, quite different answer for the S, that's okay, that's all right. The process here is more important. So. If you wanted to estimate this, you know, differently, your numbers, that's fine. That's not a problem, all right? So here uh, we have, we're gonna go with 30, and we go with the uh, 2.5, one over 2.5. So that means here you have minus SI over 30. So that means SI would be equal to, you know, just go ahead and write this again over here, 2.5, so that means SI, I'll keep the minus sign there, is 30 over 2.5. And that means SI is negative 30 over 2.5. And you can use your calculator. This exam does allow a calculator. Some, some exams don't, whether it's theoretical calculations only, but this one does. So I'm dividing here by five halves. So as my fifth grade teacher taught me, keep change division location and invert and that is going to be minus 12 centimeters okay so does that make sense well it's negative uh, yeah it should be negative because behind the balloon it's behind the surface in other words we're looking at a case where it's a is virtual it's upright and it's smaller it's behind it's behind it's it's like the case it's like the case we had talked about earlier here see so you want, S, this is negative space. So S size are C negative, uh, less than zero back there. So this, this checks out, that's, that's, that's what you would expect. All right, minus 12 centimeters. And then if SO is say 30 centimeters, one of them ready to go to find a focal length. It's one over SO plus one over SI. So this is one over 30. And this is gonna be plus one over a negative 12. So if we do the common denominator, 30 and say the negative 12, then you would have here uh, the negative 12 and then plus the 30. Let's see if that's right. Uh, negative 12s cancel. That's going to be uh, for the first term, one over 30. Check. Second term, 30s cancel, and you get one over, yeah, check, that, that checks out. Okay, so that means this is 18 over a minus 360, and uh, this actually reduces nicely. Uh, the, the two goes into here, nine, two goes into there, 180. Oh, look at this, very nice, and this is then one, and this is gonna be, um, let's do three first. Three goes into nine three times, and then three goes into 60. And that's gonna be, minus one over 20. So that means F is minus 20 centimeters and the radius of curvature is going to be double that I don't care about the I don't care about minus sign. I'm just going to say the absolute value is a double that's 40 40 centimeters 
So uh, you, you can have different answers, not a problem. Not a problem whatsoever, okay? So, you know, you look at this thing, there's a little curvature here, that's cool. I'm just curious if I, if I did something like this, you know, if this is 30, if this was 30, like the distance, so if that was like a 30, yeah, maybe a little bit more. I mean, it looks like it, it looks like it actually checks out by just looking at the curvature here, trying to just draw the circle. You're in the ballpark, and this is a, a problem where the process is more important. I'm not really worried about like the detailed number because you're estimating, you're estimating. Uh, so if you get something like th this, is going to be fine. Like if you had an answer where the R was like 4,000, well, that's definitely wrong, all right? Or if you had the R's like maybe like 0.4 or something, or, you know, 4 or something, you know, really, really far away from this, but anything in the ballpark. Okay, let's go to the next, the last problem here, this one here. So let's look at the first case. If S goes to infinity, all right, well, that would be like this ray coming in from infinity, uh, if, if you had a point here and you moved it to infinity, then the ray would come in like this, it would go down like this, right? And it would hit the mirror here or somewhere like that. And since that's the focal point, it would then come out parallel. So if I put my eyeball there, this is coming from infinity. So in other words, V is gonna be infinite, infinity, all right, infinite. So here, notice that the ray actually will hit here and go back through there, but the, we don't care about that. It's basically asking for what V would be. That's like the, the image distance for the second optical element for the mirror. So again, we get infinity. For the case where we're at F, say if we start here, we would then go out like this and we would then go parallel. And then here we would head to the focal point. And it would continue down like this and go out like that. But we don't care about that. We really care about where the, the image is going to be. It's going to go, it's going to be there. The intermediate image, like in a sense, intermediate. So if that's the case, and we're talking, this is F. So V is then has to be negative F since it's, you know, V is measured on this side. So V would be negative F. And the case where you have 3F, well, for 3F, remember, say, we did something like this uh, with, I think, a mirror. So we had some similar questions, but if we had 3F, this is F. That's where you're the same size, by the way, if you're 2F. But if you're 3F, back here, you're going to be, you know, smaller. But, but where? Uh, where is that? Well, we, we used a formula for that. So 1 over SO plus 1 over SI is 1 over F. So we're saying here we're starting out with 3F. So 1 over 3F, and that's this one, is plus 1 over SI equals 1 over F. So 1 over SI is 1 over F minus 1 over 3F. And once again, should be doing this, you know, on a piece of paper, not trying to squeeze it in. Uh, here, uh, this would be uh, 1 over F, uh, 1 minus a third. So this is 2 thirds, 1 over F. So the SI is 3 halves F. So this is going to be one of these and a half. So this is 1.5 F. Well, 1.5F is gonna place you right there, and that's gonna get you a, that's the that, that makeup here case. So we'll do the rest over here uh, where we, we supposed to. So, you know, you have a case where uh, you have the object is going to be, you know, halfway, at the halfway mark. Uh, from what we figured out because if, from before, so if you now use the formula one over SO plus one over SI is one over F, then uh, for the SO that you're dealing with here, that's gonna be, that SO is gonna be your, your 0.5F. 
So here you are, you're point, point 0.5 F away. And just to make sure we're all good with that, when we did this first pro problem, we had 1.5 F away. So that's 1.5, 1. 1. this is one and a half. That's here, but since this is F, if you have a half F beyond, then you're a half F to the mirror, so we're good. All right, and that's same focal length there. So therefore, one over SI is one over F minus one over 0.5 F, and this is one over F minus two over F, so this is minus one over F. So the SI is minus F. So I think we did one of these where we had the magnifying glass. Yeah, we had the magnifying glass. And when we had the object halfway, the image was at F. I remember that, we did that. So this is the same thing with the, with the uh, mirrors. So that means V, since V is measured uh, this way and here, I'm good, I'm, I'm good. Uh, v, v is equal to uh, F. So, you know, I'm behind the mirror, but V is measured behind the mirror. So, so the SI, that's minus F, that's, that's gonna be behind the mirror uh, at this distance. V will be F, all right? So there are the three cases. So we might just uh, write down those answers uh, here. Uh, v here is infinity. And for the second case, we got V is, for the second case where we were here, V was minus F. And for the third case, V is plus F. There are three cases. Okay, now we go come to the problem that takes a little while, and and we're going to uh, set it up uh, this way. Go ahead, and you wouldn't want to redraw the figure. Yeah, this is a waste of time. Don't do this. I'm just doing this because I'm going over the exam. So here, uh, we're going to uh, have one over S O one plus one over S I one is one over F for this one, and then one over SO2 plus one over SI2 is one over F for that one, the same thing. And the D here is two F. Like we've done many times. And then the D, the, uh, well, I actually used a D, uh, D minus, like if you have, say, here some, the intermediate image, where this is your SI1, you want D minus that, D minus SI1 to get you SO2. So these are the equations. This is basically what you need to do this problem set up. Okay, so now once when you got that, uh, what we're gonna do is, you have, you have a preference, you, you, you have a, you could use and here it's up to you. This is the notation is up to you. But here you could say, what do you call that S? So in other words, he's calling this one S. So we can use that notation. He's calling T, he's calling T this thing. And you know, D is two F. And this would be two F minus T. And he's calling, let's see, S O, He's calling that U. Now you gotta be careful. This one I'm not calling anything. And since V is on the other side, you'd have to put in a here uh, a minus V. So you gotta be careful. So you might wanna just stick with the notation we did in class, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the letters that are in the problem. So then I have one over F is one over S plus one over T. The reason why I like to do that is because I hate writing subscripts. And then for the mirror, one over F, is one over U plus one over, just have to have that minus V in there because that V was measured in negative space. Okay, and then the U is a D minus T, which is two F minus T. Okay, now I'm ready to go. So one over F 
is, if I add these together, I get the T plus S, all right? So uh, this is one of us. We've done, we've done this several times, so it's kind of a, like a rerun. Then this is ST is equal to F T plus S, and then ST is TF plus uh, SF, and I'm solving here for the T. That's the logic. So after the T, then um, do the replacement for the T, and then go and find the, uh, the final value. All right, so here, if I want the T, uh, I'm going to go with uh, T is S minus F. Bring that on the other side is S, F. And I get T is S, F over S minus F. So we've done that many times. And because of that, we could write the answer down for the, the mirror. See, the mirror is 1 over U plus a 1 over minus V is 1 over F. And, you know, the, the minus V, just like we saw for that T, that minus V is we would say, well, what was the S? The S is the U. What is the F? The F is the F. And what is the S? The S is the U. And so I can, you know, quickly write down the second one. I don't have to go through the uh, algebra again. It's the exact same thing. So V is minus UF over U minus F. So all I have to do now is get that connecting equation where the connecting equation is going to give me that this one here. So the connecting equation U is 2F minus T. So then I'm going to put this in here. So the U is 2F minus S, F over S minus F. And then that U is going to go into here. So what I'm going to do first is work out the U. So the U is, we're going to find the common denominator, S minus V. So this is 2 S, F minus 2f squared minus ff. In fact, let me let me do this first. Let me get you this common denominator, and then we're going to have a 2f times f minus f minus sf. So that's what this is. So the s minus f cancels, you have the 2f, and then you have minus that. So then once you do that, then this step comes next, where you have 2fs, and then you have minus 2f squared, okay. Notice here that this simplifies. So the u is sf minus 2f squared over s minus f. And, and there, I'm going to take that and go into here, and then, because I'm solving for v, that's what I want to do. So then v v, then here's where it gets a little ugly. So this is then, I have the minus sign, and then I have to put this sf minus 2f squared over s minus f uh, times this f, and then over, and here's where it gets nasty because you have to put that u in again down here, sf minus 2f squared over S minus F minus F. And then we multiply top and bottom by the S minus F. And that then gets you minus, I'm going to just group these two together. Uh, I'm gonna just put a parentheses around there. It, it helps me keep things straight. Two F squared and F. So I multiply top and bottom by S minus F, so that's gone. I'm going to have S, F minus 2, F squared minus, and this is going to be S minus F times F. Okay, now I see that there is an F 
here, it cancels that F. There's, a, there's a, one F that cancels everywhere. So if I go to the next step, I have minus SF minus 2F squared, where I kicked out that F, and then I'll kick out this F here, and this is then minus 2F. And if I kick out that F, I just have S minus F. So we're almost finished. And then uh, we notice that if we look at this denominator, this is at, num numerator stays the same in this step. And we're gonna go here, S minus two F minus F plus F. All right, the S is cancel. And one of the F's go away. So, so that means the V is minus SF minus 2F squared, keeping the numerator the same. And now here the S is canceled and minus 2F plus F is minus F. So I get this. And now look at this, the, the minus signs cancel. So that gets you V is SF minus 2F squared over F and now F cancels. And then finally, the V is S minus two, minus two F, acute formula. Let's write this formula down again over here is S minus two F. So that's the master formula. And now we're finished, but I wanna check my, my results. Uh, here, if S goes to infinity, I'm supposed to get infinity. Well, if S goes to infinity, I get infinity, check. If S becomes F, I'm supposed to get minus F. Well, if S becomes F, I have F minus two F, I get minus F, check. If I get three F here, three F minus two F is F, I'm supposed to get F, check. Master formula checks out, beautiful, all three. Okay.